Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to the Dynasty Wonderland podcast with me, the Mad Chata, Ryan MK, and of course, by my side, the man, the salary captain, the March Heron, Mr. Aaron Stewart. How's it going, buddy? Oh, doing good, man. Doing good. I, my schedule's all kinds of messed up here, but you know, getting back to some normalcy here, and what better way than getting back to doing some podcasting that's right some football so how are you man did you survive the holidays yes survived even though my car got broken broken into i think i talked about it on uh the solo pod that i did and we talked about it off pod so i won't get into it i i ranted quite a bit about it on my uh, other podcast the miscellaneous debris podcast you can check that out wherever you find this one shameless plug there and yeah, man. It's uh, otherwise. I mean, that was obviously a bit of a pain in the ass. But other than that, no, nah, it was a good, good turkey day, and um, you know, we had it, it was a nice break in the middle of the week uh, from work, my work week. So, but yeah, we're back to talk football. How was your Thanksgiving? Good. Thanksgiving was great. You know, a lot of time with family, chance to recharge the batteries. I had a little. Uh, I. I can't say cross country trip, but cross Texas trip. Then, right. you know, Texas is freaking huge. So cross yes, Texas is. is, yeah, it's quite the journey, but you know, all is good. All is good. A lot of good time there. Chance to kind of sit back, recharge the batteries, you know, cry a little for the Cowboys and uh, get right back into the grind, man. That's right. That is right. Well, we'll get into a little week 12 discussion. Um, I don't have a lot to say about the Monday night football game normally on this uh, podcast in, in, in the, during the week. This is one where we talk about the Monday night game. We usually record right after. And, uh, you know, other than, you know, Antonio Gibson, love what he's doing. He had a one nice touchdown run. No, I don't even know. Was it a touchdown run? I think it was a touchdown run, but it was called back due to a penalty and, Right. Um, so he's playing well. The Seattle Seahawks not playing well. Uh, DK Metcalf <laughs> is just not really getting targeted. It's just kind of a mess. And so I'd be surprised as hell if Russ isn't out of there after this year. But uh, I don't know if you have any quick thoughts on the game. It was kind of blah. I mean, got a little interesting at the end. But mm, you know, when the final <laughs> score is 17 to 15, yeah. I will say the one – really cool thing from this game is something that had very little fantasy impact but what was it? it was Washington scored a touchdown they went for an extra point it got blocked because I think their punter was kicking the extra point because their, their kicker no 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 I was a mistake I was mistaken on that but like the kick got blocked and the Seattle guy was able to run the blocked extra point back for a touchdown and since it's an extra point that's returned by the opposing team you know a lot of people don't know this it's like the seattle got two points on that so yeah. it's like they went up nine to seven you think oh kick the extra point it's gonna be ten to seven but because of that it ended up being a nine nine tie at that point you know that's a that's a three-point swing so that right. was a cool play and then i'm i'm with you with seattle it is it drops them down to three and eight and it happens at some point to teams you know you could be successful for a long period of time but eventually you know it it all kind of caves in a little bit and you do start to wonder are these going to be some of our last games we see of russell wilson with the seattle seahawks because people are like oh but wilson's struggling like would they trade him would they still get uh multiple first round picks that's that's what i believe the bears were offering in the last Mm -hmm. offseason and you know what? It hasn't been Russell Wilson's best season. But yeah, like if if you are a team that feels like you're a quarterback away, you're absolutely trading two first round picks for Russell yep. Wilson. So oh, yeah. it will be fun. It'll be interesting. And oh, to be a Seattle Seahawks fan right now, the in the uncertainty, it's so weird. But yeah, with the Met, Metcalf, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, it's it's all crazy. It's just kind of crumbled. The, you know, you don't see it, you know, for a team that was riding so high, you, you don't see it normally crumble like this in this fashion. Yeah. So pretty interesting. Um, okay. Well, we will keep it moving with week 12. We're going to 
just plow through this thing. We are recording a day late, so apologies to the mad catch for that. But we keep going off with their heads. The next section, I'm just going to run through the couple ones I have real quick because for me, this is pretty obvious. Proponents of mine, I've been a proponent, I should say, I switch that around. I've been a proponent of these two for a while now, particularly Cam Newton. I was very happy to see him back. And he was, it, it, you know, did some exciting things the past couple of weeks. But week 12, whew, five for 21. Didn't even reach 100 yards. Two interceptions. Just awful, awful, awful. Now, you hope this is a blip on the radar because he didn't look this bad the past two games. But, it, you know, it is a reminder. Like, it's just kind of funny with the Panthers. They're doing everything they can. They went Teddy Bridgewater, they did the same Darnold, and brought back Cam Newton. They are doing everything to try and find a quarterback. And uh, so we'll, we'll see. They passed on Justin Fields. Let's, don't forget that. But um, we'll see if he can bounce back. I can't imagine they're going to go with anybody but Cam for the rest of the year. They, they got to ride or die with him at this point. And um, we'll see if he can bounce back. But and, and then Baker Mayfield and the Browns offense. I just don't even – I mean, you know, Chubb with Hunt coming back. Yeah, you can rely there. But there's like nothing from this passing offense. Baker, he's got an attitude about him. He just wants to be pissed off and, and, and lash out everywhere. And it's just like, dude, you got to realize you're supposed to be the man and you're playing like shit. And maybe it's because you are beat up. But regardless, you're out there and you're playing. And it's it's just uh, four interceptions and nothing. They got four interceptions off Lamar Jackson. I, I mean, they got to feel, I, I believe it was just three points is all they got out of the four interceptions. So I, I just, yeah, I, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm over it. You know, I was a big Baker fan, a big Browns fan coming into this year and they started off looking good and whatever it is, it's just been up and down and Baker Mayfield just, man, wow. So that's my uh, off with their heads uh, nominations, and you go ahead with yours, my friend. This is I might take a little different spin on this because when I keep going through and I'm like, okay, what? Who are my off with their heads? I find myself going back to teams or players I've talked about before. So you know, I might address mine from like kind of a dynasty perspective here. I like this. And, so the fir- first thing I got here is sometimes with these young, talented receivers, there's a certain point where you go, it just isn't happening. And yes, people talk about the third year breakout. It's honestly, if they're going to be stud players in Dynasty, they're allowed to have a quiet rookie season. But that sophomore season's vital. And Lavishka Chenault and Brian Edwards are both in the same category for different reasons brian edwards people are like why don't they target brian edwards why don't they target him there's there's an advanced stat on player profiler that i believe has the answer when i've talked about it before brian edwards the truth is he's just not separating his target separation has been just barely inside the top 100 and it doesn't matter how great of a player you are like if if you can't get open like why would you have the ball thrown to you, especially right. when, you know, his teammate is Hunter Renfro, who is one of the best at creating uh, separation. Like people go, why is Renfro out producing? I'll simply put it out running. And the, the other receiver, this, it kills me because I am super high on LaVisca Chanel since day one, but here it is. It's start of the season. DJ Chark's out. Cool. I mean, unfortunate for him, but for Chenault, it's like, that's awesome. The number right. one receiver's down. This is great chance. Then Jamal Agnew happened. That's like, well, that's not good for Chenault. And then Agnew gets hurt. It's like, okay, like we start, you, you get on Twitter and everyone's like back on Chenault. And I'm like, well, I, it's more of, I hope it happens for, for his sake. But, ooh, and we see this one. He did lead the team with nine targets, but five catches, 33 yards, really? Like the fact that Laquan Treadwell, Laquan Treadwell put up 
a better wide receiver performance for the Jaguars than LaVishka Chenault. Ah. Could the breakout happen? Sure. There's always a possibility of it. But right. I sit there and go, you know what? Like, this is where you start going, maybe trying up for the draft pick and just kind of waving the white flag is the yeah. right thing. And then just – here's another painful one. Christian McCaffrey. Season-ending injury, a multitude of lower extremity injuries. And he's played in 10 games the past two seasons. What what can you do with this guy? Like, in, in those 10 games, it hasn't been 10 full games either. There's There's been, oh, man, just going off memory there, there's had to have been at least three of those games he left the game early. And, and now you're kind of – you kind of stuck with McCaffrey, and that sounds really weird in Dynasty. But really, what what do you do? Like all your league mates know that he's injured. Like right. I, I have a league mate that's offering Christian McCaffrey. It's like what 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 would I really offer? Like I'm sitting there as a rebuilding team, and part of me goes, "This is the perfect time because hey, four, well no, we'll say eight weeks ago, yeah, trying to get McCaffrey would cost you everything. But now, like really, what do you pay?" Well, you know, what do you feel comfortable? And I sit there and I go, I don't really know. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to screw up this rebuild. You know, I don't know if right. McCaffrey is the guy to like take all this draft capital and, and trade it. But yeah, it's those receivers, it's the dynasty lesson. And we are the dynasty wonderland. Like, yes, you could be a truther for some of these guys, but you also have to like see the results right there and temper yeah. your expectations. 100% agreed, man. And it's definitely a bummer on those two. As far as Christian McCaffrey, I don't know. Like, you know me. If that was me, I had no Christian McCaffrey rostered anywhere because people go bananas over him. But if I had had him anywhere, best believe this offseason, I would have been trying to trade him because that's how, that's how I do things. And I would have been looking mighty smart right now. Because, you know, just a, just a really quick, like, rapid fire on this one. Dynasty, would you rather have Christian McCaffrey or Javante Williams? Javante Williams. Javante Williams. Uh, Christian McCaffrey and uh, let's, let's say J.K. Dobbins. Dobbins. Christian McCaffrey and probably the last one here. Uh, let's do... Let's do Travis Etienne. Etienne. I'm going to go. Yeah, I know so like that, a couple of those guys injured, yeah. but I, I, I just feel like even if McCaffrey has some left, it's not much. And there's no guarantee, right. it, it, you know, he can stay healthy. So, right. you know, and plus, you know me, I'm always looking for, I'm always trying to get the younger running backs and then, you know, I'll, I'll play him a few years and then I try and sell them so that I can keep the cycle going because, right. it, you know, they just, uh, you never know when it's the such end a slippery is coming. Slope. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a slippery slope with running backs. We've seen it. We've seen it with David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell. I mean, the one moment they're having two to three, like just elite running back seasons. And then the next moment they, like Gurley's out of the league at 27. Mm -hmm. um, not saying McCaffrey's going to like fall out of the league. Fortunately, he could still catch passes. Right. But it was also my concern with Dalvin Cook, honestly, going into this season where I was like, yeah, Dalvin Cook's been, and speaking of injured running backs, Dalvin Cook yeah. like, injured too. And, and it was like, Dalvin Cook has had these great seasons the past two or three seasons, but he hasn't played 16 games in any of those. And look, he, he had already missed a game earlier this season, or right. maybe it was two games. He had already missed some time. And then it's like a shoulder injury, which at least it was a lower extremity, but like, you're right. And the, these guys, McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, 25, 26 years old, Alvin Kamara, who's been banged up 26 mm. years old. And that's about like, you, that is the time, as you mentioned, like that you have to sell. And it's extremely difficult when you're, when the reason your dynasty team's winning is because of those guys. Right. But man, like if you, 
if you miss time that you go from I could trade McCaffrey for multiple first rounders and like another like young guy. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, I, I don't know. I, in the off season, I would think you could trade McCaffrey for Austin Eckler and at least one first rounder. But now, <laughs> good, good luck. No, I'm, right. I think I saw a trade of like McCaffrey plus a draft pick for Austin Eckler. Or no, it was a uh, it was McCaffrey and an injured running back, maybe Derrick Henry, for uh, for Austin Eckler. And that team that traded for Eckler was a, was a team that's one to win, but it's like that's how that's how fast it changes in mm-hmm. this with running backs. And so Indeed. for people listening that play Dynasty, you've got to be careful. That means you should be watching some of those guys. Like, honestly, like the Antonio Gibson, like, and not yet with Jonathan Taylor, but like, a year from now is when we mm-hmm. start going. Do I trade Jonathan Taylor and capitalize on the fact that his value is going to be the highest it will be? Not this off season, but next off season, Jonathan Taylor sell time. <laughs> so yep. I that's the way I do it. But uh, absolutely. But all right, so on to the observations. Let you go ahead and kick it off, man. We we'll get this first one going and. Uh, Let's get through these bitches. All right. I, you know, I'm already crying about the Cowboys. So I got to take shots at the division rivals here. How about this? The Eagles let an opportunity slip away. Uh, got to make some punts here. Because poor Jalen Rager with like the two critical drops. And, yeah. you know, that they have been rolling. They have been rolling to their credit. They have, they had cut the deficit to two games with the Cowboys well, I've been going right there, and it's just a painful game. It was like Jalen Hurts had three interceptions, and, and Hurts, he's either going to win you your fantasy football matchup or he's going to lose you your matchup. Mm. Like he had, He's had a few of these games where you go, oh, my gosh. Right. But just painful for the Eagles, especially the Jalen Rager. Like it, I was seeing stuff all across Twitter. Oh, Jalen Rager is the worst receiver in the NFL, and – you have to stop and go. They still have JJ or Sega Whiteside right. like, on, on the <laughs> roster, and like when you when you are saying Jalen Rager is the worst receiver in the NFL, and, <laughs> and his teammate is Jaws, like uh, it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. Also, yeah, I know like it's not an original thing, but just think of what the Eagles could have been if they could draft the wide receiver position just start right. doing what belichick does like don't draft receivers like let, let someone else draft them and develop them and then you're the one to give them the contracts there but just that that was a bad that was a bad bad loss because yes the giants only put up 13 points and you couldn't take care of business there just brutal 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 so poor eagles right yes. as they were getting back to the race the uh, things they, I know uh, they tripped. I'm sure they'll bounce back, but yeah, that's uh, yeah, I don't have much to add, man. That was uh, that was a surprising one, in my opinion. So, um, I'll kick it off with my first one, Cincinnati, man. Who day they done punched Pittsburgh in the face, right in the face. They had 21 second quarter points. Joe Mixon had 165 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Joe Burrow, nothing crazy, 191 touchdown, one pick. But uh, he did have a rushing touchdown. And uh, T. Higgins was the man in this one, went over 100. He had a touchdown. But really, man, we both kind of talked about this Cincinnati team, and I've talked about how I really like their offense. And they've had some down weeks as of recent. But, you know, Joe Mixon – We mentioned him. I think it was just last week, uh, you know, mixing it up. Dude is killing it. And the Steelers, they're continuing to be what we thought they were. Everybody got a little excited about him there for a second. And, you know, this is kind of what I've I've expected. So, you know, I don't think uh, Big Ben and them Steelers are going to be doing much in the way of playoffs. But, but, uh, yeah, man, it's – this division is crazy right now because you got the Steelers falling off. 
the Bengals are surging. You got the Ravens that just find a way to win and the Browns are an up and down mess. So it's, it's, it's really an interesting division, but I like what Cincinnati's doing killer game and uh, love the offense. Keep it up boys. Keep it up. Absolutely. And props to the Bengals. Um, this was a team that we had pointed out, I think early in the season of going, it's a team to keep the eye on because mm. They, they were, they're building something. And what separates them from Pittsburgh is that there's an identity. There is an identity in Cincinnati. And the, the only thing is, and the pod father talked about it on the top 10 takeaway show, is that we all thought, people that analyze this game, we thought this is going to be a pass-happy offense. You have Joe Burrow, the first-round pick from last year, and he had three very capable receivers you know his college teammate jamar chase t higgins who you talked about who was the guy in this game went over 100 yards scored a touchdown and tyler boyd who is you know a slot flanker guy that can help move the chains yeah he's uh, no slash. Our, our problem was we got the identity wrong no the identity of this team is relying on that that ground game with joe mixon and mm-hmm. You know, maybe, maybe looking back on it with hindsight, we maybe should have seen it coming when we analyzed maybe the offensive line a little more because we're like, yeah, because what did we criticize the Bengals for in the draft? Oh, they didn't draft a tackle to protect Joe Burrow. Like, no, but the guys they brought in, kind of some older guys, maybe didn't have quite the speed there, but guys that are clearly doing their job opening running lanes. Mm. So it, it's one of those things where it's like, man, I kind of take notes and I go, when I'm analyzing teams in the off season, I should pay attention to the moves that, that teams make, because maybe in my mind, I have like basically a Madden uh, idea of, of this team, like how I would use them in Madden, but that's just not what the Bengals are. But you know what? Because they have that identity and they've executed it to perfection, like the last five weeks, they're seven and four. They're right in the thick of the playoff hunt. And as you mentioned with the Steelers, they're struggling. They're now five, five and one. There's it's gotten to the point where the media has finally caught up to what you, me, a lot of people in the underworld have, have thought about the Steelers team going into the season. We're like, this is not a good team. This mm-hmm. is a team with Bratwurstberger who barely has an arm at this point. And it was working in early in the season, but it's just how we, with the Raiders, we don't, we don't go, Oh, like they started off so well, or the Panthers that were three and O or the Broncos that are three and O it's like, right. yes, teams can get hot. Give me half a season. I could tell you more about what these teams are. We're saying right. to the Steelers, they can't put away the Detroit lions. They get curb stomped by the Bengals. They ain't going to make the playoffs. And right. for the Bengals, they, I don't know what, what they'll be this season. I, I see them as like a playoff team. Maybe they, they don't get out of the first round there, but, sh- but they are building something. They are building something that maybe it's what we thought the Browns would be, or right. would have been this season. Just crazy. Yeah, they had the wrong Ohio point. team. That's a good point. Very good point. All right. Your next observation. Gotcha. And I dropped something, but that's okay. So my <laughs> next observation here is after a week off, it's good to know that Cordero Patter season continues. Yes. This game, 18 touches, 135 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, I know he won't win it, but when you think about what MVP is supposed to be the most valuable player, is it not Cordero Patter season? He's been season? Yeah, he's been I, killing it. When he's out, like this offense is nothing. Yes, it and it's it's been a remarkable story. I mean, just when when we talk about the, the receivers earlier, that I was like, yeah, I don't know in dynasty, and you know, then you've always got the Cordero Patter season, you know, eighth year breakout. It can happen, but it's it's fun. It's this Falcons offense is there can only be one good thing. And we, we thought it'd be Ridley. And, and I know he's got, he has some mental things going on that hopefully he's been able to take care of, mm. but he was struggling and Kyle Pitts. Well, he is a rookie tight end. Guess what folks rookie tight ends historically really ever they're They're never fantasy relevant. So Patterson, Patterson, 
the only guy that could do anything there and just it was proof it's like we had a minor minor little uh uh speed bump in the road but comes back excellent performance it's just fun to root for guys like that right yeah yeah once again i really don't have much to add man he's been he has been crazy i definitely think this is a year where you could give it that award to somebody who's not a quarterback you know what i mean right. and um you know jt's making a little bit of noise but certainly patterson's in the mix okay i gotta agree with that so all right i'll move on to my next one give me some of that mac daddy jones baby that's right mac jones 310 yards two touchdowns i mean this offense this patriots offense it's getting kind of scary, man. It's starting to look better and better. And uh, quickly, poor Titans, they're just falling apart. They can still run the ball. Both Dontre Hilliard and Dont Foreman, over 100 yards. They ran the ball almost 40 times, 39 times. Um, and chewed up some yardage. But uh, they got 13 points. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Patriots got 36 and they ran the belt ball okay, but it was like, hey, do, do you need it? And I can't say I've watched this game, so I know specifically that the Patriots needed to throw the ball. But if there's ever time where it's like, okay, Mac Jones has got to throw the ball around. we got to make something happen. He played well. He played well. 23 or 32, 310, two touchdowns, no interceptions. And uh, that's a good game, man. And that's exactly – what a quarterback in that system is going to do. And it does seem to me that at least fantasy wise, we can kind of focus on Jacoby Myers and Kendrick Bourne, as far as who's going to be getting the targets from Mac Jones in this offense, all that money to John Smith and Hunter Henry. And don't get me wrong. Hunter Henry gets touchdowns now and again, but it's, it's Myers and Bourne who are getting the targets in the yards. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's 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 an impressive offense, and it continues to impress. So I, I think it'll be interesting to see it, what the Patriots can do um, getting back in the playoffs. Because I'm assuming they're going to be in. Right, and, and the crazy thing with the Patriots is what they lack in like star power on offense. I mean, like they, these guys you mentioned, like they they are producing, but there isn't like a stud number one wide receiver that that you have to plan. No, playing your defense around or anything like that, or a running back that, I mean, they, they are doing the classic, the classic Patriots uh, move with their running backs where they're not going to, they, they may have started off with Damian Harris being the guy, but now it's Harris and Stevenson are splitting, uh, splitting the, the backfield work with Brandon Bolden catching passes. And the thing that I do like about this, the passing offense is it's only going to get better because Henry, as you mentioned, was scoring touchdowns and Jacoby Myers and Kendrick Bourne have solidified themselves. It is those two guys. Nelson Aguilar, he is, we, we may have gotten fooled by what he did last season with, with the Raiders, but the, I think the missing piece on this one, and yes, I am his number one fan, but I think Johnny Smith's getting healthy and we're starting to see him being utilized a little bit more. I mean, will he be a fantasy relevant player this season? No, but like he is a guy to watch, especially as they, as they're getting ready for the playoffs there. Cause he is the chess piece. He's the queen uh, on the chessboard there because you can use him all over the place. So at one point he was leading the, the team of rushing yards, like early in the game. It was like after the first quarter, Smith was the leading rusher there. And I, and I'm telling you, like, it's been a bad fantasy season for Janu, but I think like next season he was dealing with like a shoulder injury that, that lingers for like a long time in the season, a healthy Janu next year in this Mac Jones led offense. I'm excited for freaking Patriots. Of course they would have one down season and then they're right back to doing what they do best. But you right. know what? They got the best coach in the game who knows how to utilize the, the pieces there. It's just, as infuriating as it is, is that, I did, I've been trying to figure out a way. The yeah, that, I've been trying to. That's the sound of the Patriots coming into town. It sure fucking is. 
I've been trying to get, uh, trying to find a way because I would just leave my phone sit here like the past couple of weeks that we've done this. And then the, the siren will go off and you keep talking. So I'm like, okay, he doesn't hear it. And I don't know why it just popped in my head. I was like, let's do something wacky. See if we can make it. So there we go. Okay. <clears throat> um, so go ahead with your, your next observation. Well, I'm talking about Patriots. We go with uh, the former Patriots quarterback, Tom Brady and his team. Oh my goodness. What is it with running backs this season? And this week, it's yeah, Leonard four, Lin, Leonard four touchdowns net, four TD net. <laughs> like, what a season he's had. It's, jeez, mm. to the point where everyone that wants to write him off, right? It's like, oh, they brought in Giovanni Bernard. He'll be the pass catching back. I want to say Bernard played one snap in this game. And Fournette's just playing that dang good. You know, yeah. even the people that hate him, like, look, I mean – you, you have to admit, he's playing fantastic football, and that's scary because I know people that follow football know this story, but how close Leonard Fournette was to getting cut by the Buccaneers late last season and, and having that conversation with Bruce Arians where he basically said, either buy in or, or not. And just thinking of how that one decision has made such a big difference. He had the postseason run of a lifetime that's right. carried over into this season and what, what, what can i say like if you drafted <coughs> fournette if you drafted fournette in fantasy football this year i mean and it didn't matter what your draft strategy was like if it was zero rb or if it was hero rb like and you got fournette to be your your rb2 like geez like i i haven't checked the scott fishbowl teams but i wonder how many teams at the top of the rankings there of the standings have Leonard Fournette. I'm sure quite, quite a few of them do. Right. He's just been that dang good. Yep. I agree, man. It's crazy. We saw last week it was JT. Who else went off? Austin Eckler. Yeah, that's right. And then this week, this week you get fucking Leonard Fournette. It's, it's great to see uh, like these explosions. Cause they, it's just, I like when running backs go off, man. I really do. Right. <laughs> uh, so, it, yeah, I, I was never a big Leonard Fournette fan, but um, I, I always liked what his potential could be on the Bucks. And even I didn't right. expect some of what he's been doing. And uh, mm-hmm. and like I said, I'd never really had anything really totally against him. I just wasn't all the way bought in. And um, like I said, moved to the Bucks, switched that up a little bit, and and yeah from the playoffs till now been damn good and good. So ride the uncle Lenny, the uncle Lenny train. All right. I'm going the battle of five hundreds. You got the 49ers and then you had the Vikings coming to town. And this was a pretty interesting game. And also fantasy wise, I, I just can people just, enough right like elijah mitchell he's the man i mean it's the niners and it's kyle shanahan so it could change next year (laughs) so in dynasty maybe see what people are offering but honestly he's he's played really well in this one 27 attempts 133 yards a touchdown he caught five passes for 35 yards i mean just doing it all doing it all And um, that's what you like to see, Uh, as well as Debo Samuel. He got in six rushes for 66 yards and two touchdowns. Fucking Debo's. It's almost like they're they're using him in all these different ways. It's like, all right, Elijah Mitchell is going to be the running back. And now that Brandon Ayuk's out the doghouse, we're going to kind of him have him be the number one receiver. And then Debo, we're going to kind of have you be the hybrid guy. <laughs> it's, it's just what it feels like. And uh, it, it, it I, I mean, hey, they've, they've played well the last couple of weeks. And I was just questioning this team, this offense and all of that. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, they played well, especially against a Vikings team that's, also been playing really well and been kind of hot and just took out the Packers. So, you know, it's, uh, 
it's interesting to see Dalvin Cook, of course, getting hurt. So people are going to obviously hop on the Alexander Madison train. And, you know, you know how we feel about him. It OK, he's had some good run this year. He certainly has when he's gotten the opportunity. And, and before that, you know, you and I were like, eh, eh. But he's played better this year. However, someone I spoke about in the offseason, someone I think you spoke about in the offseason, a, a guy we like. Kenny Wu. this dude, and if you didn't notice, his uh, touchdown run, was it a punt or a kickoff return? I think it was a kickoff. Kickoff uh, return. Wait, Here, wait, let me see. Let me check. Good. Yep, kick return. It's just so – oh, yeah. Continue. Yeah. I, I love this guy. I, oh, no. Just, I just think he's great. So I, I just think a lot of people are going to be in on the Alexander Madison, and I'm just going to be like, hmm. Just think about that Kenan Wingwu because I think uh, if, if he starts getting some run with Madison, he he might he might take that that over. I mean, he could he could. So I'm interested to see how that goes because he's definitely going to get some run. I don't know if you're the Vikings how you don't with Dalvin Cook out, even though you got Madison. I don't know how you don't give him more run considering what he's done. So I'm excited to see what that'll bring. But yeah, that's kind of my takeaways from the game. Um, it was a fun one to kind of pay attention to. And I thought some fantasy relevant stuff came out of both sides. So uh, yeah, fun game all around. Definitely. And, and the only thing I'm going to add is just dynasty dynasty. Like he shouldn't be available, but if he is, you're listening to this and the waivers have already processed. Like You absolutely have to pick up Kine. You don't find guys that have two kick returns for touchdowns on the season. He's only returned eight, eight kicks. And with the way the rules have changed, like this, this isn't the same NFL that Devin Hester dominated right. kick returns and right. punt returns. Like scoring a single kickoff return for a touchdown is difficult. To do it twice is remarkable. To do it 25% of your career kickoff returns in, in the NFL just uh, – like. That's the stuff you want to target for the end of your bench because if it doesn't hit, oh well, like you, you cut them and you move on. But like having these explosive athletes and weird things happen, like Madison, to his credit, has been fantastic. There's been two games he's played in over 65% of the snaps. He's been a top 10 running back. He has shown. He has answered the questions that you and I and others have had because we were like, well, does he really catch passes? He has been catching passes this year. He does seem to be the, the complete back. But if he reverts back to what he's been, the, what the two previous years before this, that opens the door a little bit for Kine to take, take, a, to take some carries. And I know it's only two carries, but he's got 16 yards, like eight yeah. yards. Like, you can only keep explosive players off the field for so long. And then exactly. just briefly with Debo, holy crap, that's insane. Uh, hopefully the groin injury is not too bad. Looks I like one to two pessimistic. Weeks. Looks I know, like one I'll to be two pessimistic, weeks. though, because the right. groin injuries, I mean, Curtis Samuel. <laughs> I'm Curtis Samuel, anyone? So. I pulled a groin. That shit but, is. Those shit, yeah. That shit's not fun. Just, exactly. Yeah, um, <laughs> so. so Brandon Ayukin. Brandon, are you, are you it, it's, it's there, but let's also just say like what Debo's done the last two weeks. It's, it's crazy. Two catches mm-hmm. for like 27 yards, I think. And yet he has scored close to, what was it? I think it's over 35 fantasy points over the yeah. past two weeks. I, I know it's not traditional receiver production, but good players just points produce points. fantasy points. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Points are points. And I, I personally like it when they're versatile and can do things right. like, you know, carry the ball six times, 66 yards and two touchdowns. I 100% agree. 100% agree. All right. Final observation, my friend. You first, then me. Let's get to it. Let's hit the good old Green Bay Los Angeles Rams game, a battle mm. of two top NFC teams. And you know what? You might have taken – 
the Matthew Stafford out of Detroit, but maybe you didn't take the Detroit out of Matthew <laughs> Stafford. Where I'm getting at with this one is once again, Aaron Rodgers owns Matthew Stafford. Yep, that is And true. what, four weeks ago, we're like, oh man, this Rams team, top team in the NFC or one of the top teams. And oh, they've added Odell Beckham and oh, they've added who was uh, Von Miller. Mm-hmm. It's like, geez, like in I'm raising my hand. That was me. I was like, I, yeah, yeah, this Rams, I yeah, hard, hard to stop them. Except since then, everyone has stopped them. Right. It's, it's been, been amazing. And with Green Bay, Green Bay is dangerous because not only are they winning so many games, they are missing key players, still missing key players. There's no Jair Alexander, who was arguably the best cornerback in the league last season. There's the the left tackle, um, Baki Hart. Yeah, like he's he's not back yet. It's and when you look at the offense there, there's just clear roles. Adams, stud receiver, MVS. Yes, it's boomer bust, but like he's got a skill set. He's he's the guy that's going to stretch the defenses. That allows Adams to do his job. Randall Cobb has been making plays out of the slot. And then the backfield, Aaron Jones did return. Uh, I still, I probably am not going to start him next week either. I'd like to see a little more. I think he's playing hurt. I don't feel comfortable starting him, but AJ Dillon, like the fact that like, it seems like you'll get Jones healthy for the playoffs. And then AJ Dillon is just such a dangerous guy in this game. Perfect example. He's the player I really wanted to highlight 25 touches 90 yards, a touchdown, and has answered the the one question we had for him was he was big, he was fast, could he catch passes, or was it going to be Royce Freeman 2.0? Right. And now nah, he's Aaron Rodgers clearly trust him. Like well, we're constantly seeing what four to five targets and he produces. That I even with Aaron Jones back, I still think AJ Dillon is a league winner. Mm-hmm. Certainly could be. Certainly could be. Especially if they're trying to keep Aaron um, healthy for the playoff run. So, right. Yeah, I don't really have much else to add. I know, uh, you know, Odell got some run in this game. He got a touchdown. So, but I, I did. I do, I do think one thing is I did see something. Was it on Twitter or Instagram about Devonte Adams saying he spoke to Odell? And Odell said, we got to trade shirts after the game. He was like, go trade shirts with Cooper Cup. Did you see that too? Like, (laughs) like, that's your boy. That's where you wanted to go. And it's like, yeah, you could have been on the Packers. But I imagine Odell doesn't care. He's living in, you know, he's he's on an L.A. team in L.A., he's got money. He's Mm -hmm. I'm sure he's fine. But, yeah, if he if his number one thing was winning, I mean, that would have been a good choice, the the Packers. But (laughs) But, uh, yeah, so that's all I got to add. And I'll go ahead and get into my last one, which is feeling a mile high because the Broncos continue to surprise on occasion, as they did a couple weeks ago against the Cowboys. And they take out the Chargers here. Uh, I don't think it's overly shocking because the Chargers, as much as we thought, Um, this offense was going to be just something very difficult to slow down. It has not been that it's had its moments. It's had its games, but it's also had its struggles. And um, I definitely didn't see it coming against the Laplace bar, but I also didn't see the Broncos, you you know, doing this shit to Dallas either. So (laughs) it's just kind of weird where I, I mean, the Bronco and you, and you look at it and it's just overall, I mean, Okay, slow down. Herbert did throw a couple of picks. But overall, I mean, you got Teddy Bridgewater, 129 yards throwing. He was 11 of 18. He got hurt at one point. Drew Locke comes in, throws an intercept. I mean, like, it, <laughs> it was such – it was so bad. It was so bad. And I actually liked Drew Locke a little bit when he first came out. But he's just bit yeah – so it's just like quarterbacks a mess for the Broncos, but they still find they got Javonta Williams and Melvin Gordon. Hey, he's had a good, pretty good year too. So, I mean, they yeah. just keep plugging along and sometimes they do this to teams and the chargers, man, I don't even know. I still got faith in Herbert, but 
they got to get some more around. Like, I love me some Keenan Allen and, you know, Mike Williams is whatever. But they need some more around him because Austin Eckler, he's getting to that point where you're not going to be – like, he's not going to be – you know what I mean? Like, he's going to start hitting a cliff too. So, you got him and then – Keenan Allen's getting a little up there in age. We need to get Justin Herbert some more weapons is what I think. And that defense needs to pick it up as well. But, Great. yeah, I definitely think we need to see the Chargers get some more weapons for a Mr. Justin Herbert. Uh, but, yeah, the Broncos – all I can say, the last thing about the Broncos is I can't wait till next year because they're going to get their ass as a quarterback. I don't know if they're going to get in the Russ sweepstakes, their Rodgers sweepstakes. I don't know what they're going to do. They're going to find a way to get their ass a quarterback, at least they better, and – they're going to have all these weapons and Javonta Williams is going to be the lead guy. I can't wait for the Denver Broncos of 2022. I think it's going to be a fun team. Of course, I also thought the Browns of 2021 were going to be awesome. So, you know, you win some, you lose some, but that's what I got to end my observations feeling a mile high in the mile high city, my friend. And I, I love it because people that have been listening to this podcast since the off season know that, the Dynasty Wonderland. We are pro. Javante Williams was the best running back in the 2021 NFL draft. It's becoming a thing where now people are like, oh, mm-hmm. yes, I want Javante over Najee. I want Javante over ETN. No, 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 no. You guys don't get to do that. No, no, no. Ryan and I have <laughs> yeah. been on Javante Williams since the offseason yes, when you have. guys wanted ETN and you guys want Najee. And so you, you you just sit there and drool over Javante. No, no. Next season with Javante is not for you guys. It's for us and the people that have been, that saw this coming, that saw the talent of this guy and how good he looks, even when he's splitting the touches nearly evenly with Melvin Gordon. It's infuriating as it is. You know what? Gordon, you talked about it has been good this year. Despite all of us, we wanted to go. He's not going to be good because he's getting older and everything. (laughs) And I'm with the other infuriating thing with the Broncos is we talk about the quarterback upgrade because we sit there. They, they locked up a couple of receivers, Tim Patrick, who has been this, the solid, the solid guy there, you know, when his numbers called, he's had some big weeks. Like you could do a lot worse for a number three receiver, great story for him to get to this point. He's really had to scratch and crawl, scratch and crawl, scratch and claw his way for this contract. And they got Cortland Sutton and that extension. We'll see if that pays off. It it just, he seems to be kind of an odd, the odd man in this group here, but they could have had Justin Fields. They could have had Mac Jones. And Mm -hmm. then we wouldn't even be talking about like quarterbacks next, next season, because this, they have so much receiving talent. We didn't even get into the tight ends. We don't need to. They've got two athletic freaks. I think everyone at this point knows their two, their two-headed tight ends, uh, two-headed tight end machine there. Yeah. They're some of the best athletes at the position. They're running backs can catch passes. Uh, because they had to draft a cornerback, they passed on not one but two quarterbacks. Like, just shame. Shame on Denver. Shame on Or shame. <sighs> but – to see that they could take care of business with the Chargers. And I don't know, imagine Herbert with these weapons. Eh, Chargers still have, like, they've got Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler. Mike Williams, he's a fraud. He's a fraud. He is, there was Sam Darnold. He was a fraud for for four weeks. Is Mike Williams not a fraud too? Four weeks, he performs, you know, has like the Devontae Parker uh season where all of a sudden he's suddenly good but now he's been bad like come on Mike, yeah. Mike Williams is the fraud he's the Sam Darnold of the Chargers and I think that that's a great place for me to end my rant <laughs> there you go I can't even disagree because uh and I've never been big on Mike Williams myself but you know I, I did at the beginning of the year get a little tricked and I was like oh hey there you go Mike Williams are we we're about to have a pretty good year here huh yeah right <laughs> so mm. all right before we get out of here real quick Aaron Thursday night preview once again your Cowboys rocking and rolling on a Thursday they travel to the Bayou to play them some New Orleans Saints they're going to rebound take out this Saints team who we just you never know with them 
Now, we do have C.D. Lamb returning. Amari Cooper as of now still on the COVID list. And then for New Orleans, you got Alvin Kamara practicing in a limited fashion. We'll see if he can make it back for this game because, God damn, they need him. And then the question of will Taysom Hill take over at quarterback? So a lot of stuff, a lot of other, you know, newsworthy, you know, discussion points outside, you know, surrounding this game. So some interesting stuff. Give me a couple minutes on your thoughts and uh, then we'll knock this show out. Well, the first point I do want to make is they did make it official. Taysom Hill is Take, well, he's been oh, taking all the first team quarterback snaps. So okay. the Trevor Simeon uh, project is over. That <laughs> we'll, makes sense. We'll see with Taysom Hill. You know, there's still some concerns of like they weren't using Taysom Hill at all. Right. And, soup, and like that's some things we may not ever get any answers for until the offseason. It's weird. <sighs> Ugh, both teams have struggled. I am going to take the more talented team, the Cowboys, to figure this stuff out. And even though a Taysom Hill offense will be tricky for different reasons, this the Cowboys defense hasn't been the problem for most of the season. Now, they just have to work on the day consistency. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, even I know Zeke's banged up too, but Zeke's not really a big factor in this offense. It's great when he's playing well, but it's Dak Prescott. Give me the team with a better quarterback, the better overall roster there. Sean Payton's a heck of a coach, and he will bring that team, the Saints, out to fight. I'm seeing the spread is the Cowboys four and a half. I will probably take the Saints to cover the spread, but the Mm. Cowboys to still win on that one. But, oh, the loser of this game, whoever it is, it's going to hurt for the playoff race. Indeed. And for the Saints, that could be – the Saints would be a fourth straight loss, and that is almost nail in the coffin for them. Right. Yeah, they need this one. I just don't – I'm with you. I'm taking Dallas. I don't see how I, – I don't, I don't see Dallas losing two in a row. I just don't. So, all right. That's what we got. That's what we got. Any final thoughts? Did you want to mention anything from the – terrible slate of thanksgiving day games that we i guess the the vegas cowboys game got interesting so uh, you know didn't end the way you wanted it to but any final thoughts before we dip out aaron you know it's we are in that home stretch here fantasy football playoffs are right around the corner right Uh, best of luck to people that are that are competing hopefully you've got some strong teams i got a couple teams that i think can make some noise and you, the the last thing I got is just make sure if you're listening to our podcast on YouTube, on any platform that you listen to podcasts, hey, give us a like, give us a follow, give us any type of support. It helps. You can find me on Twitter. I'm at Aaron Stu09. Uh, you can find our show. You can even follow our show on Twitter. That's at DW, what is it? At, at DW underscore, hold on. Pod. Pod. <laughs> I am blaming I that you. on the fact that it is late. Yeah. And the time. caffeine clearly hasn't <laughs> kicked in. At DW underscore pod. And Ryan, where can they find you on social media? At RMK Madness on Twitter or Instagram. Uh yeah. Check us out. Check us out. Follow, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. All that good stuff. And for now, we get the hell out of here. Until next time. Until next time. <sighs> we'll be back Thursday night. Recap this game. Saints, Cowboys, and preview week 13. So until then, stay safe, stay vigilant, stay mad. From the chatter, from the captain, we're out of here. Ta-ta for now.